take one or two. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. So good to see you this morning. Welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Isn't God good this morning for us all? Amen. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to give honor and praise to our great God in heaven. Amen. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and thank you, Holy Spirit, for, you know, making this possible for us to know him. Amen. As we read his word, you know, it's, it's funny for me. You know, you read scripture over the years, and then you read it the tomorrow, and you see something like, wait a minute, didn't I read this before? I, did, I missed this point, <laughs> you know. He, he's, he's growing us, illumin, illuminating the scriptures to us, and that is so wonderful. I, I, new, new stuff every day for me, and I just thank you, God, for, you know, just opening our hearts to who you are. And we welcome you here. We welcome those who are out in, you know, Facebook and on the website. Um, you know, we, we miss your presence, obviously. It's, it's you know, the, the edification of the body is, is a good thing to be here. But we understand, and we, we're, we're just uh, so grateful that you would want to spend this time this morning with us. Amen. So I invite you to sing praise to God wherever you are in, in the sanctuary or out in the, in the world. We just want to give him praise and honor today. Glory to your name, great God. Amen. Amen. We good, Bob? <laughs> Here we go. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. We're here to worship you, O oh great Father. You are above all. We just love you so much. This is why we're here, to give you praise, to hear the word that your pastor has given to, you've been given to him to give to us. We sing to you right now. Come on, church. Lord, we've come to worship you. We've come to lay down our lives at your feet. We've come to honor you and offer you our praise. Lord, we've come to worship you. We've come to lay down our lives at your feet. We've come to honor you and offer you our praise. Lord, we've come to worship you. We've come to lay down our lives at your feet. We've come to honor you and offer you our praise. Lord, we've come to worship you. We've come to lay down our lives at your feet. We've come to honor you and offer you our praise so our hands go up and our hearts go out and our voices rise with a glorious shout we're delighted to sacrifice everything everything Hallelujah. So our hands go up and our hearts go out and our voices rise with a glorious show. We're delighted to sacrifice everything to honor you and offer you, to honor you and offer you. To honor you and offer you our praise. Father, receive our worship. Father, receive this offering. Lord, we agree that you are worthy. That's why 
how we give you everything. Like the widow and the two mites. Father, receive our worship. Father, receive this offering. Lord, we agree that you are worthy. That's why we give you everything. It's all yours. That's why we give you everything, all that you've given us. That's why we give you everything. Oh, we want to magnify it. That's why we give you, we give you everything. Yes, we do, oh great God Almighty. Everything, everything we give to you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. You remember the widow in the, in the two mites? She gave everything. Amen. And was blessed for it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your spirit. Hallelujah. Change me. Change me. Come on. The spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Yes, let our anthems ring and our praises sing. Hallelujah to his name. For the Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Let our anthems sing and our praises sing. Hallelujah to his name. For the Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Come on. If you have a need, you can call on him. He will meet you there right where you stand. Just lift your voice and call on his name. Yes, yes, yes. If you have a what you can call on him we will need you there right where you stand for the spirit of the lord is mighty in this place you are the sanctuary come on church hallelujah yes the spirit of the lord is mighty in this place yes yes the Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Yes, he inhabits you. Amen. Come on. Let our anthems ring and our praises sing. Hallelujah to his name. For the Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. If you have a need, you can call on him. He will meet you there right where you stand. Just lift your voice and call on his name. If you have a need, you can call on him. He will meet you there right where you stand. For the Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Oh, take it up, take it up. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I see it. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Our praises sing hallelujah to his name. For the spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Let our anthems ring and our praises sing hallelujah 
Spirit of the Lord is mighty. Yes, hallelujah. Ways. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. We come to praise and bless his name. We serve a mighty, 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 mighty good God. Hallelujah. As we come before you this morning, giving all honor to our Lord and Savior, let us bow our heads now as we go before the Lord. Almighty and merciful God, who is the giver, creator of all perfect things. We come this morning lifting up your holy name. For if it had not been for Jesus, oh where, oh where would we be? We come to bless his name today. Lord, we ask that you will continue to show favor on this branch of Zion. Enabling your people, oh God, to stand tall and stand firm but most of all, stand strong in your word. Oh, Lord, oh, God, we see things happening right before our eyes, our physical eyes. But we know, God, that you have everything under control. As we said sometime, you got it in check. Oh, thank you, Almighty. Lord, we thank you this morning as you're going to use this young preacher, oh, God, to come with the word and come strong, but not wrong. Use him, God. Use him like you would use a confidence too. Let him, Lord, just expound on what you have planted inside of him. Oh, Lord, we need you now. We ask so merciful, Father, that you will look out over the sick and shed in, those that are able to move freely, oh, God, for whatever reason, oh, God, Touch them with the finger of love right now. Oh, we praise your holy name. And we ask, oh God, to continue to encourage our hearts, oh God. Bless the young people, the children, oh God. For we know we all face some troubled times. There's times that's going to come before us, oh God. May seem to be upsetting, but oh God, we trust you. And we know you have it all under control. And, oh, God, we ask that you would bless these, our people. Oh, Lord, wrap your big loving arms around us, oh, God. Hold us close and tight, oh, God. Not allow, allow old oh Satan to come in the mix, oh, God. Oh, Lord, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you like we never needed you before in these troubled times. Continue, oh, God. Continue with the good work that you have started here, oh God. Lord, we just thank you so much that you enable us to be able to come on this platform once again. And we ask, oh merciful Father, that as your word comes today, oh God, hearts will be changed, minds transformed. Give us a new look on life, oh God, because we trust in your holy name. We do thank you and we praise you. And we lift up your holy hand, holy name, in the powerful, matchless name of Jesus the Christ. We do thank you and pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Give God some praise. Amen. amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Glory to 
to God. Good morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are in his house, his sanctuary this morning to lift and praise him. Welcome to those of you who are on YouTube, Facebook, or who are streaming on our website. We are so blessed and honored to have you uh, here with us this morning to worship. Uh, we are so excited to share the gospel message this Sunday as we make a difference for Christ. I'd like to start with reading a thank you card. Uh, and it says, thank you for everything. <clears throat> Faith Outreach Community Church, your thoughtfulness was appreciated more than you know. The Perry family thanks you for the prayers, cards, texts, and phone calls during our sister's illness and ultimate home going. We also appreciate the beautiful flowers the church sent for the service. We thank God for you all. Love in Christ, the Perry family. So that was from the Perry. I'd like to uh, read a previously announced praise report, and it says Ann Parker would like to announce the engagement of her daughter, Alicia, to Arturo Jack Fusco. Uh, wedding plans are pending for later this year or early next year. They plan on living in San Diego, California. Congratulations to Alicia and Arturo. So we praise God for that union and uh, just keep them in prayer. Also, we have uh, one new prayer request, and it's from the Voice of the Martyrs, and I'd like to read there an urgent need of prayer for thousands of Christians that are still in Afghanistan after the Taliban takeover. And they have been sending me prayer requests on this quite often this week, so they're asking our prayers. It says, Christians in Afghanistan are working to advance the gospel even at mid-Taliban uh, control. During the Taliban's takeover in Afghanistan, many Christians made the courageous decision to remain in the country as a witness to Christ. There are still thousands of followers of, of Jesus in Afghanistan, a frontline worker said. Those faithful believers are working to advance God's kingdom despite danger and opposition, as economic instability and uncertainty have left many Afghans desperate for hope. Recently, some Afghan families heard the gospel and have become followers of Christ through local believers, amen, amen. This is so important that we don't just think about the United States. We have to think globally, family. We have to, because these are our brothers and sisters and they need our prayers as never before. Uh, it goes on to say, um, through, through local believers, uh, the frontline worker said, because of the oppressiveness and because of the desperation, Afghan Christians have had multiple opportunities to share, to be salt and light, to serve, to give food, to reach out in practical, tangible ways, but then slowly talk about the good news and how they have discovered eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Afghan brothers and sisters continue to boldly advance the gospel in Afghanistan, you can, you can encourage them through prayer. Here are specific ways to pray. Number one, pray that Christians in Afghanistan will experience the joy of the Lord even amid suffering. Number two, pray that they will experience God's peace and provision. And third, pray that they will have opportunities to share the love of Christ with their neighbors <clears throat> and that members of the Taliban will repent and place their faith in the one true God. Amen. That is so important. Thank you, family, uh, for your continued prayers for our sisters and brothers around the world. And I will continue to bring news of how they're doing uh, each and every month because it's so important that we understand what's going on globally. 
Uh, previously, prayer updates. <clears throat> this is from Pastor Wade, and it says, uh, no side effects from new treatment, spring, summer allergies, harder to treat with lower uh, immun immun immunity, uh, nose and eyes are suing for abuse. <laughs> Still blessed, please continue to pray. And then uh, this is previously announced last week from Chris McGill, and she says, we are recovering from the past few days. My breathing has been better today. My CT scan didn't show any evidence of a blood clot in my lungs, but two nodules were found on my right lung. I will follow up with my doctor. Mom had chemo and a couple of other treatments on Thursday. Uh, she is experiencing side effects. Please pray for healing, comfort, strength, and peace for this journey. Ron is well. We see Ron here today, so we know he is well. Praise God. Standing strong for us, and thank everyone uh, for your prayers. So we so continue to pray for Pastor Wade and the McGill family uh, this week in your prayers, as well as everyone else that has uh, asked for prayers. Uh, under general announcements, there will be a men's ministry meeting next Saturday at 9 a.m. The meeting will be on Zoom, and the invitation will go out this week. The sermon today is entitled, The Lord Takes Care of His People, and it will be given to us by Pastor David Russell. Thank you, Pastor Melinda, for that um, very important prayer request. I know sometimes I have to check myself during the, during the week. You know, you get kind of busy and stuff weighing on you and other things, you know, and you got that list that you haven't looked at in a day or so. So I encourage us all to, to continue that. Amen. And the, the Voice of the Martyrs, you know, th that group has helped me um, think about Christians that don't look like me, you know. To, to, that don't don't sing the same songs that we may sing here, um, that may go about their lives in a different way, but but so committed to Christ, you know, and we we need to think of our family, as you said, in this global sense, you know, people in in Myanmar or people in Africa or people in you know uh, you know Arkansas, they you know all different, amen. They don't sing the songs we may sing, but they. Mm -hmm just so connected to God. Amen. Amen. And with these people, you can go ahead and start. We can rise. We're going to sing one more song of praise before, our, before the sermon that we hear today. These people have committed to this. The words that we're singing in this song right here, this is a commitment. They love God more than anything, more than their life itself. Amen. Amen. We need to have that same spirit because they are brothers and sisters too. Come on. Here we go. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Anything, yes. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. This is what he's doing for us all, brethren. Love me in your arms. You are my shelter from the storm. When all our friends were gone, you were right there all along. I 
never known a love like this before. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Oh, talk to him, talk to him. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yes. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yes, Our Lord. I love you, Jesus. Yes. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you more than my life, Lord God. We declare this to you now. I love you, Jesus. Yes. I worship and adore you. And just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more. More than money, power, pleasure. I love you, Lord. Put it all aside. I, I love you, Jesus. Jesus. I, I worship and Lord. adore you. Lord. Just want to tell, tell you, yes, Lord. Lord, I love you more than anything. We love you, Lord. We praise your name. You are so worthy. You loved us first. We thank you, great God. Lord, I love you more than anything. Praise his name. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, saints. Hmm. You all continue to just express your gratitude and love to the Lord. Amen. Because that's all right. When you understand. how good the Lord is to you. When you appreciate what he has done for you, how you have experienced his presence, his power, that fellowship, amen, as you embrace even more we say we love you, we love you, Jesus, because we realize how much he loved us and what he gave up so that we could be lavished with the love of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Giving glory to God. Amen. Because that's what it's about. It's about giving glory to God. It's about giving honor to him and praising him, amen, and thanking him. We're here another day because he allowed it, amen, and there is purpose with this day. There is purpose with this day, amen. 
Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to stand before the people of God. Amen. You know, me and um, Pastor Celia, we we have kind of thing. You know, we we're thankful to be used, but you really, when it's done, you're able to breathe. Amen. Because this is serious. This is no joke to stand before God's people. So we don't take it lightly. And, and like last week, she got in the car. She, whew, <laughs> time before I got in the car. Whew, I don't know, Pastor. I don't know if you all do, but we, whew, Lord. Just wanting God to be glorified. Amen. We thank God. Amen. And even what was um, discussed with the voice of the martyrs, the reminder, how Christians are dealing with things all over this world. But our faithful Lord, amen, our faithful Lord is watching over them. Wherever you are as a Christian, the Lord is with you to help you, amen? But he wants all of us to participate, amen, in praying one for another. It's important for us to be a part of that, amen? Amen. amen. It kind of goes in line with what... Uh, we're discussing the day the Lord takes care of his people. I did want to bid a good morning to those who are online uh, via the different um, mediums that they can get online. Praise God. Welcome. But let's pray and get started. Amen. Father, we come first to say thank you to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. To thank you so much for lavishing on us your love, that we are your children now through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God who gave his life for us all, who gave his life for the world. So we say thank you. We ask, Father, that you would have your way here today that you will test the hearts of those, these your people, whether here physically or those who will see online, that the power of your word, of your anointing, of your presence would impact the lives of these your people, would encourage these your people. That Lord God, that it, they would be refreshed and renewed and strengthened to keep going. Because we can't do anything without you, Lord. So have your way here today. We thank you for your presence. Please remove any hindering forces in the name of Jesus. But be glorified. Be magnified in this place. So, Lord, have your way now. We thank you uh, just again for the opportunity to be here. May you lead, guide, and direct all things. May every thought, word, or deed be pleasing in your sight. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise and thanksgiving and ask it together in Jesus' name. And we say amen. amen. Our text today comes from 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, uh, verses 16 through 18. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 16 through 18. And it's important for us to understand, praise God, before I read the text. This was written, let's say about 67 AD. Paul was in prison. He was getting ready to go before Nero, amen. And, 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 and Paul is writing to Timothy 
to encourage him. Timothy was a young man in the faith, and, 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 and Paul is, is expressing things to Timothy, amen, truths to Timothy, to help Timothy to go forward, amen? And I think it's important to understand that, that it, was, it was kept, these words were kept for not just Timothy, but for all God's people, amen, who, who would face things. Here he is in the most uncomfortable place, in a dark place, a place where they weren't worried about how comfortable you are. A, a, a place where there's no adjustment, praise God, to the, 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 you know, the, to the temperature in the air. Amen. I came in, first thing I said is, Melvin, can you get the air on in here? Amen. But, but, but Paul, Paul is in a place where they don't worry about how hot it is or how muggy or how uncomfortable it is. Paul is in a place, praise God, and he's only in there because he is going to trial and he knows that at some point, praise, his life, his physical life will end. But Paul wants to get some things out to express to Timothy, amen. It, it, let me tell you the way it is. Let me express you the truth so that your imagination doesn't get away with you because sometimes we, we can think about somebody, and, and, and our minds will, will take us places, amen. It will take us to some of the darkest places, some of the scariest places. And Paul said, let, now let me tell you about how God takes care of his people even in bad places. That there are seasons of time where it's rough. There are seasons of times where, you know, you, you, if you could, if you had Club Med, you would choose to go there, but you can't get away from this right now. you just in this place. And Paul wants to express to believers, amen, and God knowing that this would go forward, that praise God, that, that even in your worst place, you serve a God who's able to take care of you. And his care... His care is good enough to keep you going. Paul is, is expressing some truths to help with our thinking process. And let's just read the text real quick. Verse 16 says, at my first defense... No one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. Verse 17 says, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. Verse 18, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom, to him. Be glory forever and ever Amen. Paul says, praise God, the Lord takes care of his people. And I want us to grab a hold, praise God, of, of what this, the Spirit is trying to encourage us. Amen. The Lord takes care of his people even when there's nobody else around. You, you, you got somebody, amen, who will sit with you, who will lie with you, who will walk with you through every journey. He says, the Lord. That word means the master who has all authority, who's in control, who is the boss. The master but I felt compelled to talk 
that, that, that don't let that word master because for some master is an uncomfortable word because historically we know when we hear master we think about how blacks were treated you know years ago when they had masters but but no we're not talking about that kind of master we we talk about a master who would come out of glory we talk about a master who would put on flesh we talk about a master who would walk this earthly journal and, and, and then a master who would go to the cross. Who, who would say, give me all of their sins. Give me all of their problems. I'll bear it. I'll take it. That's the master we're talking about today. We're talking about a master, praise God, who wants good for his people. And this is the master that Paul was talking about. And so he wants to encourage Timothy. He, and in fact, when you, when you look at it, praise God, Paul's not, Paul's not just saying, Paul is actually boasting about the Lord. Paul is giving a testimony while he's chained up in prison and from everything I read, it's a deep, dark, down, down and deep in the earth kind of prison. Where it's probably mold and mildew, must, and all kind of things. He's writing a letter to tell you, I'm good. Because of the master. I got illumination because of the master. It's not as dark as your mind may think it is because of the master. I have someone who lights up my whole life, even when my physical realm is troubling, amen? I have someone who knows how to dress and deal with me in my hard places of my life, I'm talking about the master today. I'm talking about glory be to God. When nobody else wants to be in this place with me, he will come and sit with me, the master. He, he, he will get in here when there's tears coming down my, my eyes. He will sit with me and he will encourage me. He knows how to get to the deep places of my being, my heart, to help me. I'm talking about the master. So Paul is, 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 by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is expressing this because people need to understand that their Lord will be with them in the deepest and darkest and roughest places of their lives that he will not abandon them. But why is he there? He's there because of the message. He's there because of the good news of Jesus Christ. He's in this place, this Roman prison, and it's almost like the, 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 the greatest human empire is trying to squash the greatest empire that there can ever be. Nero is trying to shut down this message. But he can't do it. And so they put him in a bad place because they want to keep him quiet. Oh, glory. Sometimes the enemy wants to put you in a rough place to try to get you to shut down, to stop trying to let your light shine so bright. He says, if I, if I make it rough on them, they'll stop. They, they won't praise you in this hard place. They, 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 they won't pray, pray to you in this tough place. Paul said, no, 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 no. The master will sit with me, and I can, I can still do what I need to do. Because the Lord takes care of his people. In fact, he delights to take care of his people. And, I, I, and so he's there because of this message that he proclaims. 
And, and, and I wanted to expound that. I, there's a scripture. If you can go to Ephesians, the, the, the first chapter. Jackie, can you put that up? Before we get into the, the meat, praise God. That's not my mom already in trouble. <laughs> I might have the two point, two, two part. This <laughs> Ephesians, the first chapter, beginning in verse 13. And, and I just want you to grasp, Paul is, is saying to, to the Ephesians, amen. In verse 13 he says, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth. The gospel of your salvation when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Do you know your God's possession? Do you know your God's possession? God, 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 God has you. You belong to him. Keep reading, because I want to, and so we understand that the message that we believed, see, everything is straight now. We good. We believe, we believe, you know, that Jesus is the Son of God. So we are sealed. We are good. But Paul expounds it even more, which I, which I wanted to just cover so that, you know, it, it will help us. Amen. It can help us. Verse 15 says this, for this reason. Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. He says, I keep asking that God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I, I, <clears throat> Sometimes people get saved and they just want to stop there. But part of what helps us on the journey is getting to know God better. It's not just about, you know, I'm saying, no, it's about getting to know God better because the more you know him, the more you're confident in him. Amen? And so it's about growing, and that's what his emphasis is. I, so that you may know him better. So that when you go through what you're going through, amen, you won't be as easily tossed to and fro because you know how faithful he is. He says, 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his, of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power. For us who believe, that power is the same as the mighty strength, verse 20 goes to say, he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. Amen? So that you can experience God's power. Amen? And so the message opens us up to all that God would allow us to have and experience. And that's why Paul's on trial. Jesus told him, no, I'm, I'm going to use you so that people will go from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of God. He's on trial. So we can turn back, praise God, to 2 Timothy, which we can hit. You know, people are saying I keep using three points. You all know for a couple years I have dropped it down to two points. I, and I'm, I'm about to go to one point because I'm struggling trying to get my second point in. <laughs> Amen. My two points, praise God. But I want you to understand clearly, Paul wants to set the record straight. And so he boasts about God. And I want to just, I, I, I want you to see, he, he says, again, I want to read again. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. He is boasting. 
about God. And so he's setting this straight so that that Timothy and all believers would understand that we serve a God who takes care of his people even in trying times. And so the first point, praise God, is Paul was relaying the awareness of God's care. The awareness of God's care. Amen? And number two is the assurance of the Lord's care. Amen? Point number one, praise God, let's rock and roll. Amen? He says, at my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. Amen, amen, amen. And so he, the awareness of the Lord's care. He was aware Amen. And, and aware means mindful of God's, God's care, and, and he was conscious that God was in operation in his situation. And there's three things that he mentions when we talk about the awareness of the Lord's care. He, he was aware of his presence, if y'all taking notes. He was aware of his power, and he was aware of his deliverance. Amen. He was aware of his presence. He was aware of his power, and he was aware of his Deliverance. You all know that he offers that same thing to us today. Amen. He was aware of his presence. Amen. And, and let me hit this praise God real quick. He says, at my first defense, that people, that people left deserted him. L- l- let me, because this came in, in, in my spirit. Let me, let me, during that time, one of the his, historical things is, years, a couple years before, they had been burning Christians alive. They had been burning Christians alive. And so that frightened people. They believe that's possibly one of the reasons people weren't ready to just be all in there because people was worried about what could happen. Doesn't mean they weren't Christians. It just, they was, it was, a, it was an issue. And so Paul says, may the Lord not charge you against him. And I'm saying this to say, Don't let bitterness get in you because of what somebody else is not doing. Don't let bitterness get in you. Start messing up your thinking or your feelings because somebody else is not doing what you think they should be doing. Paul said, Paul was like, forgive them. May the Lord not charge it against them. And Paul said, let me get my mind off of what they're not doing, and let me get my mind on what I have. I have the Lord with me. Can I get an amen? Because how many people know what, what people are doing or not doing can mess with some folks? Amen? It, it, it'll mess some folks up. Where they will sh- If Paul was petty, Paul was saying, I ain't writing nothing else to these people. Ain't nobody here. I ain't preaching. Don't be asking for anointing cloths. Don't be, you know, don't be asking me to cut nothing and send it to you and pray over it. Don't be asking me to do, I can't count on you to here bring some bread up in here. But Paul wasn't patty. Paul wasn't what, Paul focus wasn't on what people was doing, but Paul's focus was doing what God had told him to do. Paul focused what was loving on the Lord. Didn't we just, I love you, Jesus. And it was his love that kept him moving. He he got time to be worried. We don't have time to be worried about what somebody else ain't doing. Do you know that will, and I feel like, do you know that could be a ball and chain on somebody? If you get wrapped up on they ain't doing this or they ain't doing that, it's shutting you down. Where, where, where? Oh, glory, glory, glory. Well, because Paul wasn't focused on them, Paul was open to continue to receive 
the divine power that he needed to keep doing what he needed to do. Because it wasn't that fleshly messing him up. It wasn't that flesh making his mind think wrong about the situation. Come on, give me an amen, amen. Because we know a lot of people that will take their ball and go home. Now how y'all going to play? Y'all won't let me pick the teams, I'm gone. But Paul wasn't focused on that. And so he quickly got out of his thinking because the enemy will try to get you to focus on what other people are not doing for you or what this, and it will mess you up. You won't pray like you're supposed to pray. You won't operate like you're supposed to operate because you worried about what somebody ain't did. When God's trying to use you. And he can't use you the way you need to be used because you're worried about somebody else. Let's keep going. Amen. Paul says they, they, they deserted me. But that's all right. That's all right, Timothy. The Lord stood with me. The Lord stood with me. Amen. And that, that's his presence. And you know, I was just kind of trying to meditate on, oh, okay, Lord. What does this, what does that look like? Amen? The Lord stood with me. And when you look at the word stood, it really means supported him, gave aid to him. Amen? So what does that look like? And I was, I tell you, I, 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 had, I had closed my book. You know, okay, I closed my book. I'm done for the night. I'm going to lay down. I lay down, and then the Holy Spirit just gave me an image. I said, wow. What does it look like when the Lord, so, so, could just to, so, I can, so, so that I can aid, because I, I need to see it really to expound. When I was younger, I was about five, six, I probably shared this before, we was in Chicksand, England, and I can't remember whether they, the, my, my siblings were home for lunch or they was out after school, but my mom, I made a, my mom made big, a big pot of soup. And I'm talking, it was hot. Just, I mean, you know, you, boop, 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 it's, it's hot, hot. And my big brother Charles got some soup. And I was so happy, you know, I mean, I'm the youngest, hey, I'm playing at his feet, and he, he David, watch it, David, watch out, da David. And the next thing you know, he spilt his soup. And you know where the soup came? The soup splashed on my face. Boiling hot soup. And I went from wanting to pray for Charles to what is this pain that I'm experiencing right now? And I started screaming. Ah! Ah! I was just screaming because of the pain. Because when you, look, I got burnt on my finger not too long ago, and that was bad. But this was on my face, you all. And it burnt, and I was screaming. And all I remember was a voice of my mother coming and said, David, it's going to be all right. And I remember her patting me. And she was patting my face, and she was patting. And, and, and the, the pain subsided as I heard her voice because she was a caretaker for me. Amen? And as she patted me, look, I wouldn't worry about Charles no more. I would. And, and I could focus it, and it calmed my spirit. Now, years later, like if Charles were here, he would say, you know, Dad said, don't let that boy see his face. Because <laughs> you know? my skin bubbled and peeled. And you know the white part? That's what you could see. I'm looking at Pastor's face like, wow, didn't know that. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> and he says, that's what my support. That's when I stand with you. That, that calmness that comes over you when you go, that's what it looks like. And 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 
See, y'all sitting here, everybody trying to imagine Pastor Faith still tore up from the soup. Amen? And you can't tell today that I was burnt like this because the master healed my face. The master healed my face, amen, when you can't see, amen, how bad it was. But the master did something in my life, knowing that I'm going to use him years later to do some things, amen? Lord Jesus, I don't want to say nothing funny, but I don't know if Celia would have dated me if my face wasn't right. (laughs) But all of that God did a work. And so he brought me back to the times where I went through. Now I'm talking spiritual. Times where I was messed up, scared, afraid, and that still small voice would say, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen? And so when it says he stood with Paul, this is what Paul is saying. In your darkest times, God will calm you. He will ease you and and, and touch you in such a way that you're able to keep going on. You're able to face it. But you want to know him better to even experience that. And this is what Paul, he said, look, y'all are sitting over there and everybody, oh, he, you, you know how people are, right? People imagine, the, you know, I was kind of just laughing, thinking, because as my, as my mom had, was patting, like, well, where's everybody, what was everybody else? Well, you know what people do when something's going on? People peeking and you ever you ever, you ever been driving and there's an accident on the other uh, other side and everybody on your side just slow down because they want to know what's going on. But there's only one who can meet your needs when you're going through, and it is the Lord, the same Master that Paul is bragging about. And he's saying, Timothy, don't you ain't got, don't worry about what you face. Let me tell you how the master's going to take care of you. He's going to be there to calm you. He's going to be there to hold you. You know, the, the word support even means that even if he's got to lift you up, he will lift you up. If you have fell down, he'll pick you back up. No matter what you're dealing with, the Lord is there. So you got, we got to have that awareness of his presence. You're not going to your job by yourself. You, you're not dealing with that situation by yourself. You have the master with you. He says, he, 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 he stood with me. He says, then he says, he enabled me. My, my, my. He enabled me. Which is, a, which is a confession, I can't do this thing without divine help. I, 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 I can't move the way I need to move, operate the, the way I need to. Uh, if, if God doesn't release that power in me, I can't do it. And he said, and that's what was happening, that God was still empowering him, that God was still encouraging him, that God was still working so that that message can go forward. Our God is a God who still gives strength. Amen? That power will still flow through through us and help us. That's why Paul says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. He empowers me. You know, it's something. It's when we start recognizing God's work and his power. How many times have you been ready to throw in the towel, but yet you keep going because strength comes from somewhere? Because God is working in you. Amen? And sometimes we need to just shout, amen? Because the Holy Spirit, it lives in us and it's, it, it's empowering us and releasing in us. We are partakers of of, div- of God's divine nature. Ain't that exciting? Why 
while the enemy is trying to wear us down mentally. God is infusing us and building up the inner man that we can keep doing what we need to do. Evil just wants us to stop shining. It wants us to stop being the salt that we're supposed to be. But how many of you all know that you have an anointing on your life to do what God has called you to do? Amen? And because of that anointing, you are able to do all that God wants you to do. Because power is on. My, 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 my. Power is flowing. And even more now, because I know you all see the news. Even more now, our lights need to shine. Even more now, we, we, we need to be vessels by which God wants to do his thing in 2022 and beyond. Amen? Because everybody got an opinion. And there's only one opinion that matters. And that's the author of this book, the Lord. Amen? He enables you. And I want to encourage you because God wants to strengthen us to keep doing what we're called to do. He says, he enabled me. And then he says, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. In many commentaries, they say they're not sure if that meant Nero or, or the lions that they used to put Christians in to deal with real lions and to, to kill them. I mean, all, this, the, all of this evil to shut down people who just want things better for you. Because our faith is about love. Amen. But yeah, you want to stick a line on somebody because they just want to do right. They just want to treat you as, as, you know, they want to treat you as they would like to be treated. And so the awareness has got to be there for us. Amen. So he, he deliverance for, from, from either lions or just evil in general. You know, it interests me that, that, that Nero can, 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 can't say he didn't hear the message. Sound like he should have accepted that thing, because two years later, what did he, what, what he do? They say he committed suicide, because he was troubled. Hmm. And he needed deliverance. But our Lord, who stood with Paul, who enabled Paul, also delivered Paul. Psalms 34, 19 says, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Amen. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from them what? From them what? From them what? He tells us ahead of time, you, 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 the righteous, there, there may be many things that try to come against you. But God has a plan to deliver you. That's shot worthy right there, amen? You know, sometimes we try to tiptoe, try to avoid the, the landmines. We try to be careful, as careful as we can be, but, but, but stuff just is going to happen, ain't it? But isn't it good to have someone who takes care of his people, who promises to deliver you, to rescue you, amen? Over the past three years, I've had COVID. I've had two surgeries, one back-to-back, -back, unexpected. I lost Phil's mom. Suffer from a, sh a shoulder issue where I couldn't raise my arm, a difficult boss, facing the pressures of trying to sell a house and get into a new house. 
many days of uncertainties and scary moments. But out of them all, y'all don't hear me, out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Every time. We serve a God who delivers his people. We, we, we serve a God who is well acquainted with what is going on in your life. And so there's awareness of the Lord's care. Verse part two, there's an assurance of the Lord's care. There's the assurance, which means you are certain, you are confident, and it's guaranteed that God's going to take care of you. And that's deep too, amen? Because the essence of, he says, he says, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. And if you listen to the words carefully, he says, the Lord will. So he, he, he's talking about what he don't even see yet. He's talking about what's ahead of him, what might come. Amen? And there's a confidence. There's a confidence that though I ain't seen it yet, though it ain't, I'm not, it's, it's not here yet, I know my Lord. Because we have, there are sometimes we worry about what's not here yet. Lord, I hope this word is helping somebody. Sometimes we're concerned about what's not here. And even Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will take care of itself. There's enough you're dealing with today. Amen? He says the Lord will. He, he says the Lord will rescue me. He doesn't say the Lord might rescue me. He doesn't say depending on how the Lord is feeling, I, I might get help. He says the Lord will rescue me. I am assured he's done it in the past. He does not change. He is, he, he will rescue me. From every future evil attack. <laughs> the psalmist 23, Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or the darkest valley. He says, I will what? Fear no evil. And that's really, glory be to God, that's really what we're, the Lord would have us don't even worry about evil. Because he's going to take care of that. I will fear, I'm not going to worry about what can happen because when it happens, the Lord's going to take care of it. That's how close he is with me. That's how he rolls with you and me. Amen? Oh, glory. Come on now. How many times have you been to the doctor's office? You had tests done. And deep in the recesses of your being, you worried about what might come back. You worried about that it might be something. When, 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 when the scripture says, fear no evil. Because no matter what it is, the Lord's going to help you with that thing. I know I ain't the only one saying, what does this mean, Doc? <laughs> what does this number mean? He said, no, nah, that's, that's, don't even worry about that. But isn't that, isn't that assurance to know that when it comes, because things do come, that God already has a plan for that thing? 
You got complete coverage in Christ? You got complete coverage in Christ. He takes care of you. He took care of you yesterday. He takes care of today, and he got tomorrow covered. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. Joseph had to learn that down in Egypt, didn't he? When his brothers threw him into that system, they really wanted harm for him. And he even said, he didn't mince words. He said, you meant evil. He, you, you, meant, you meant to get rid of me. You had every intention to get me out of the scene. But God, <laughs> but God, God said, but God still had purpose, but God still had a plan, but, but you meant to get rid of me, but God said, you ain't going nowhere, you meant evil, but God meant it for good, amen? You, Evil wants to wear you down. Evil wants to put pressure on you. But you got somebody who will hold you up every time it gets heavy. He'll hold you up. Every time you're ready to throw in the towel, every time you wonder, God, what's going on? He'll get you up. We're talking about a personal God. He said, if I could go back to my last point, he, he said, the Lord stood. See, God ain't just there just to hang out. He's not just there just to be in there just looking. He's there to take action. He's there to provide what is needed. Amen? Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God. We ain't going to worry about evil attacks. In fact, Paul, Paul had to suffer a lot. Paul had to suffer a lot. And, 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 and he had mentioned in, in, in 2 Timothy 3, 11, how, you know, all the things that he had endured, yet the Lord rescued him from all the situations. I mean, they, Paul dealt, they tried, they was, they, 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 in fact, let me just read this real quick. Praise God. Jackie, you don't have this. Don't worry about this. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28 talks about some of Paul's trouble. It says, are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in, in danger from false uh, believers. I have labored, toiled, and often gone without sleep. I have been I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. You think you going through. I was sitting there kind of just laughing. After three times being shipwrecked, I think I'd ask the Lord, is there another kind of transportation we can come up with? <laughs> Out of them all, the Lord delivered him. In fact, I was, I was, all, all these things happened, and they were terrible things. But yet, Paul, you remember we talked last time about how 
that last shipwreck where the angel came and said, no, nah, Paul, God is sparing you and, and, and all the people with you because you still got to appear before Caesar. All these things are happening and God rescued him from everything so that he could be right where he is when he's writing 2 Timothy. Come on, oh, somebody better grab that. All these things are just things where God has things for you to do in the future. He says, he says, praise God. You know, I, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. But I wanted to look at one fact about this. Acts 14, verse 19. And we're getting close. Acts 14, verse 19. Acts 14, verse 19. Amen. Jackie, don't be mad. I forgot to give you 20. <laughs> it says, in verse Acts 14, verse 19, it says, then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. Not only did they stone him, they dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. Verse 20, which unfortunately I didn't tell Jackie, for those who had your Bible, says this. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day he and Barnabas left for Derba. And God just dropped in my spirit, down, but not out. Down, but not out. The enemy may be trying to wear you out, trying to beat you down. And you can get down, but you're not out. Because if Paul, if somebody can think you're dead, you must look dead. So he really have, had to look lifeless. Because that was their intent. And so they thought he was dead. <laughs> Glory be to God. He's talking about rest. <laughs> what did God do? <laughs> Y'all better grab that. What did God release? If, if somebody think you did, that, you ain't even moaning no more. Because if you moan and they know you alive. You at a place where whether uncomfortable, whatever's going on, you ain't moving. Because everybody thinks you're dead. Even the people being nosy, is he breathing? You, you, you know you got them. Everybody thinks you're out of it. But you serve a God who breathes life, who says, get up, Paul. <laughs> Glory be to God. Who says, get up, Paul. And Paul gets back up. <laughs> Y'all better. <laughs> For somebody who thought he was dead, he gets back up and from everything walks on and skull and get back in to where they drug him out. Because God was with him. When God, if God before us, who can be against us? 
Don't you give up in your hard times. Don't you give up when it's difficult. Don't you give up when it's frustrating. Don't you give up when you feel beat down because you serve a God, a Lord, a master who takes care of his people. Isaiah said, when you pass through the water, not if, but when, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they won't sweep over you. When you walk in the fire, you will not be burned, nor the flame set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God. How many times have you been down and the Lord said, get up? How many times have you, and I know there's folks who literally said in their minds, I don't know how long I can keep going. But yet, a fresh thought that still small voice that encouraged you, that said, I got you. I got you with all this outside noise that you're hearing that's that's coming in, that's trying to mess up you. I got you. For those taking notes, you can write down Psalms 55, 16 through 18, and verse 18, where it just says, uh, or 70, he says, He rescued me on harm from the battle waged against me, even though many opposed me. He rescued me. Paul says, My future is straight because the Lord takes care of his people. And he goes on, praise God, and he says, The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. Paul, they're talking about, you know, they behead people in Rome. The Lord will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. Paul, Paul, they, they burn pe- The Lord will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. Don't you worry about fi- the Lord. He says the Lord will bring you, which means the Lord takes ownership in bringing you. Because we don't know where to go. We, what's the way? Jesus says, I'm the way. But what Paul was assured of, when they think they're getting rid of me, the Lord is bringing me safely. I'm more than I'm more alive than ever when the Lord brings me safely. I'm not limping into His kingdom. No, the Lord is bringing me safely into His kingdom. He closes with to him be the glory. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are meant to give God glory. Our our trials are not bad enough to stop us from giving God glory. In everything, the Bible says, give glory to God. And so Paul tells us, praise God. Timothy, I know y'all worried about me. Because I'm in this Roman prison. But I want you encouraged. 
And I want you to know as you head forward in the ministry that the Lord knows how to take care of his people. I want you to be aware and I want you to be assured of his faithfulness. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who takes care of the people. For he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And we are reminded, Father, what he said before he left, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of this age. And so, Lord, let us go forward. Let us not shrink back in trials and tests of our lives. Let us be more encouraged than ever because you take care of us. You're with us. You hold us up. You do everything for us. It's impossible to do things without you, Lord. And so, Lord, I pray now that we would just be in constant reminder of how you take care of us, aware of your presence, your power, your deliverance, assured, Lord God, of just your rescuing us and how you just, you will bring us into your kingdom. Let nothing, let nothing, Lord, Get the best of us. That even though we may down, we are not out. So I ask that you would just strengthen these, your people, and encourage these, your people, because you are a faithful God. We just want to say thank you. We want to give you glory. We want to give you honor. We want to give you praise. And ask these things together in Jesus' name. Say amen. And while the ushers are prepared to bring the place, let's just real quick, praise God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. All that we have has come from your hand. Pray, Lord, that you will bless the offering, that it will be used for kingdom use, that it will, uh, and you will increase it so that the word can go forth, that many will hear about the good news of Jesus Christ, your saving grace, that many will be encouraged and, and go forward. So we ask you to bless this offering, and we thank you for all that, that you have given us, and we ask it together in Jesus name and we say amen In the waters of that mercy stood apart. So many times the light of hope seems fading like the sun, till it seems to even the faithful that it's over, that it's done. Do it saves the day when fear would tell us there is just no use. Why you can look this whole world over for the meaning of it all, for the purpose that mankind has always sought. But in the end, you'll discover. Listen, but God, but God, but God sees the way, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, we really, really, really.
really need to hear messages like that because sometimes we get kind of mm-hmm. locked up in our mess and not knowing, not even, you know, sometimes mess we start and sometimes the mess that the world throws at us, you know, those enemies that we deal with. And, um, but God mm-hmm. sees the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Amen. Yes. You can go ahead. Um, you can stop that, Bob, if you want. Thank you. Uh, so let's rise in light of what we heard. You know, we like to, um, you know, respond to our, the, the word that God has given us with a song of praise. Amen. And no matter what we're going through, you can stop that, Bob. Thank you. There we go. We want to give him praise. Amen. Amen. We want to praise him in all times, good times and bad. And we need to do it in both, both sides. Because we can get in so much trouble in either one of those, either way, way, either part of that scale. Amen. Let's give him praise today. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, I know God is so happy when he sees his children, you know, stepping through things by faith, giving glory to God no matter what's going on in their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Here we go, church. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift my hands in praise. Yes. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I bless. Him at all times, and I want to praise you when through the good and the bad I'll praise you, whether happy or sad. I'll praise. I do cause I owe it all to you <laughs> yes. praise is what I do even when I'm going through I learn to worship Uh, speak these words. Come on. No, my circumstance doesn't even stand a chance. My praise outweighs the bad. And I want to praise you through the good and the bad. I'll praise you, whether happy or sad. I'll praise you in all that I go through, because praise is what I do. I owe it all to you. Yes, yes. Praise is what I do, what I do, what I do. Even when I'm going through, I learn to worship you. Though my circumstance doesn't even stand a chance, my praise outweighs the bad, and I want to praise you through the 
the good and the bad. I'll praise you, whether happy or sad. I'll praise you in all that I go through, because praise is what I do. So we're talking about the sovereignty of God. He's using every, every molecule, every situation, everything to lift you up to him, to glorify his name, to mold you in the image of likeness of our son, of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We give you praise. Praise is what I do. Yes, come on. It's what I do. Yes. Come on, church. Here we go. Praise is what I do. Yes. Hallelujah. It's what I do. Yeah. Hallelujah. We praise you, great God. Oh, we praise you. Praise is what I do. Oh, yes. Come on, speak it. It's what I do. What I do, yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. We praise you, great God. Praise is what I do. Come on, church, here we go. It's what I do. Yes. What I do. What I do. What I do. It's what I ought to be doing. Amen. Praise is what I do. And even Paul, in his circumstances, the trial that he was going through, he closed with the fact that we give God the glory. Amen. That's nothing but praise. Amen. Nothing but praise, no matter what you're going through. Pastor, thank you so much for... Uh, uh, Wonderful word today for blessing all of us, and I think we can all relate to what you had to share with us today. You know, it's, it's amazing how God, you know, the Holy Spirit, when he wants something to be said, something to be taught, he speaks to us in our own journey. And so often when we're in the midst of something, we don't always think about it. But if we just take a moment, like you did by sharing with us today, and think about what God, how God has brought you through some difficult things. How many of you know you've gone through some stuff? You've gone through some stuff in the course of your life. But when you think about it, what enabled you to go through that stuff is that God stood with you and gave you strength. And so we need to be aware of that and we need to be assured of that, that God is there for his people. He's there to care for his people. And thank you so much for giving that to us today and we're truly blessed by it, and I hope you reflect on that and think about how God is truly a God that is an on-time and a faithful God who loves to do good things for people. He longs to do, his purpose is to do good things for all of us. So thank you so much. Lord, we thank you so much for the word that we heard today. We thank you for being our father, for being our savior, for being our master, for holding us up at difficult times, for being the one who's there for us, even when no one else may be there for us. You will always be there for us, and you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, God, for being a faithful God to us at all times. Thank you for being faithful to Paul, because we, being faithful to him and enable the message to go forth. Thank you for being faithful to other messengers down through the centuries so that the gospel continues to have its uh, free uh, course throughout this century, through the centuries gone by, or centuries are even going forward. Thank you, God in heaven, for everything you continue to do for us. We praise you, we honor you, we glorify you, God, for being such a God that is so good to us at all times. Saints, as you go home this week, as you go home today, as you go home throughout this week, think about what God, how God has been faithful to you, 
how God has been there for you, how God stood by you, how God never left you, he's never forsaken you. He is the one that enabled you to get through whatever circumstance you've gone through in life. And if he did it back then and he's doing it now, he will do it forevermore. Be assured that God cares for you. And may God bless you as you reflect on that, think about that, and tell others about God's faithfulness. Thank you so much. May God be with you all throughout this coming week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.